Welcome in, everybody, to the State Farm Post Game Show here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside Todd Panula. And Todd, the Saints win 9 to nothing tonight against a rival in the McKendree Bearcats. Yeah, it was just an overwhelming offensive performance from the Saints here tonight. Right from the get-go, they get their goal to start things off within the first five minutes and change, and they never let their foot off the gas. We talked about that throughout the contest. You wanted to keep the focus here on tonight. They managed to do that and they just pumped the net full of goals and shots, and <laughs> they threw everything but the kitchen sink. Yeah, exactly, and we, we talked about that before the game, how this team, they needed to put the their foot on the gas and really make a statement in tonight's game, especially against a, a, you know, a rival team. You want to do that regardless, but you need to get the feet going and, and make sure that you have all your guys ready to go for tomorrow's game, Saturday's game, but in order to do so, you needed to take care of business in tonight's game, and I thought they did a great job at doing that. Yeah, and, and it's kind of an odd thing to think about when you score nine goals because sometimes fans will accuse you of uh, running up the score, being unsportsmanlike. Really, being we've played in situations like this, regardless of what side you're on, it actually is kind of the more sportsmanlike thing to just keep going. Because if you're just cycling the puck around and passing it around and dishing, making dipsy do moves and not doing anything with it, that's actually kind of more rubbing somebody's face in it. Mm -hmm. So to continually just try to score and basically tell the other team, it's like, okay, well, it's up to you to stop us. That, that's kind of what the Saints did here tonight. And we talked about it in both of our keys to the game. You didn't want to focus too much on tomorrow. Keep the focus here on tonight. Don't take your eye off the ball, so to speak. And that's what the Saints did because they're the better team. And, and uh, McKendry is, is a little bit shorthanded this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of that has to do with going through the COVID year last year because uh, they lost some people uh, that went to play other places. They didn't get as many recruits in because you don't know what kind of situation you're going into. But overall, uh, Maryville has the jump on them now. They're, they're the better team in this conference right now. They needed to go out and show it, and they did so. Yeah, I, and, you know, Maryville, they, like you said earlier, they, they peppered shots on net. They did everything they could tonight. And McKendry, they had a goalie change in the middle of the game. But the way that Maryville came and they played tonight, you got to expect to see the same thing tomorrow. Like, it, you almost feel like tomorrow is going to be such a close game. And, no, I agree with you. Obviously, you don't want to run up the score, but when it comes to the ACHA, that plays a huge factor in rankings and goal differentials. So by all means, keep scoring goals because it's going to help you in the long run. Yeah, we've seen the reverse of it to where Coach Hogan hasn't pulled his goaltender in close games because it, it doesn't benefit you. If you right. allow that empty net goal, that can really hurt you down the line. Conversely, Again, yeah, you don't want to rub anybody's face in it, but scoring those extra goals might give you an extra point or two in the standings down the line. Right. Let's look at the final stats from tonight's game. Of course, a 9 nothing victory for the Saints, and the scoring chances were astronomical. 59 scoring chances compared to 22 for the Bearcats. Block shots only 17 for the Saints, 38 for McKendry. And I know it says down there the – uh, the Saints didn't score on the power play. However, I do believe Luke McLeod might have put one in the back of the net on the power play. Damian Karinji scored on a four-on-four four, his second goal of the game, which, by the way, he had a terrific game. We're going to go over all of the highlights later in this post-game show. But overall, I mean, you look at that stat line, what jumps out to you other than the amount of scoring chances there were? Just the, the pure amount of pucks that went towards the net. If you add up the shots, the scoring chances, the block shots that McKendry had, mm -hmm. I mean, that's probably, I didn't get a good look at the numbers. That's got to be close to 100 chances towards net. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of shots going towards the goaltender, whether they made it there or not, whether they went in the back of the net or not. That's good offensive hockey. And it came through the flow of the game. Maryville wasn't forcing a lot. They, they looked a little bit disjointed in the first period. Still got three goals in that first period. But they managed to kind of iron things out. And they really came to play in the second period. Absolutely. Well, let's see what Coach Hogan had to say about tonight's game. It's always a trip seeing what he has to say after uh, a good old tilt on a Friday night. 
Coach, uh, 17 goals in two games against McHenry. It seems like your offense shows up against the Bearcats. Yeah, you know, we uh, we have some good rivals with them in the past. So uh, in the first year or two, they kind of took it to us. So one of those things that uh, uh, we, we remember those things. And, um, you know, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn. You know, they're kind of having a bit of a down year, uh, but, but they'll be back. And um, so it's it's good to, that, that we're playing some better hockey. Um, and it's always good to play well against your rivals. So, um, yeah, it seems to be going in the um, you know, last couple games and then, like you said, when we first played them. So, a uh, good game tonight, and uh, you guys can enjoy it, and we need to be, be able to bring it tomorrow. Uh, right off the hop, you guys lose Garrett Hunter. What did you see on that play? Uh, to be honest, it was seven seconds into the game, uh, so I didn't really see much of it. I was We were trying to run a play off the, off the draw there, and we didn't win the faceoff, so we couldn't – uh, you know, run the play, and then um, literally, you, you blink twice, and, and something goes on there. So I saw it on film. It, it was the, you know, the rest made the right call, and it's unfortunate that he'll be out tomorrow. Um, but it, it's how it goes. And do you think it was, uh, you know, you guys killing that five minute, you know, power play for McKendry? Do you think that kind of helped you guys get a little momentum? Um, you know, it's funny, we, we talked before the game a little bit, you know, when we played Illinois State, it was sometimes that all the dots just connect, and I thought against that Illinois State team, when we beat them 6-0 before break, it was just one of those games that, you know, things just fell in place, and they don't happen that way a lot. Um, so we talked before the game, like, guys, when we play McKendry, things just, they just go a little off the rails a little bit. It just, when you play a rival, um, things seem to happen, and, you know, seven seconds in, get a five and a 10 and a DQ, you're sitting there like, okay, this is what we're talking about. So I thought the guys did a really nice job. We worked on the PK this week, knowing that we need to be better at it. Um, we try to take pride in our PK and I thought our PK was really good tonight. So really proud of um, the guys that, uh, it was a revolving door there. Just, they kept coming, they kept coming and our, our guys did a nice job. And it's nice to have someone like Johnny Macera in that where you can play a style of PK that that forces on the dump pucks, and then Johnny can go play the puck and, and make make a nice play and make sure it gets out of the zone. So, um, yeah, the PK was good tonight. And, I, and to your point, I think it gave us some momentum and um, you know that that first period. Not a lot of five on five hockey. Speaking of the first period, it, it seemed like you guys were a little bit loose, a uh, little bit outside of yourself. You cleaned it up in the second period. You chalk that up to just kind of post holiday stuff or. or and rival or what do you think it was? Yeah, I think, I, you know, it's always nice to get into a flow in a game, you know. You know, the first two or three minutes, you want to get all the lines out there and, and get get bumped, you know, give a bump, make a pass, um, and just get out there and get the, get the legs going. And then you layer on and you just hopefully gain some momentum in your own game individually and then hopefully as a collective group. Kind of hard to do that. You know, Jake Hannabrink and Christian Almagran and some of these guys that don't PK, they're sitting there for seven, eight minutes before they're in a hockey game. Um, it's not an excuse, it's just uh, the fact of the first period there. So, um, and, and again, I, I think it just, and then we were on the power, and then we are on the power play, and then, you know, we got PK again, and then we're on the power play. You just never got a decent flow. You, there was never a point in the first period where I think we ran all four lines, you know, in the matter of three minutes. Something always happened. So I think in the second period, took a deep breath, took a step back and said, let's make some hockey plays out there. Let's play some five on five. Um, and then I think we, we kind of got to our game a little bit more in the, in the second period there. Uh, we know Tommy Proxler, great with the clock. You mentioned before you'd like him to be a little bit more decisive. What did you see from him tonight? I thought he played really well. Yeah, you know, still a work in, uh, work in progress. Uh, you know, Tymon is, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's a hell of a hockey player. And to, to your point, he, 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 can, he can be a little more decisive, I think, and I think that's going to make him just a more effective hockey player. Um, I joke around with him. Sometimes he can uh, <laughs> kind of deal his way uh, kind of away from a play on a blue line and, then, and also kind of make two or three moves, and then he's in the corner. You know, one move, move the puck, or one or two moves and shoot the puck. And the goal that he got, he made two moves and, sh and shot the puck because he, he's in a good spot. He's got a hell of a shot. So... Um, when, when you when you have the skills that Timon has, um, it's almost it's almost like, like Timon. You you put yourself in so many good opportunities, um, and sometimes you look for the perfect one. 
a good one's just as good, you know, and then, and even if, and, and sometimes that's just, that's just coming from juniors and that's just, you know, understanding the, who you're playing in college hockey. So he played really good tonight. Again, I thought a lot of guys played good. Um, so plenty of things we need to clean up, but um, I thought a lot of guys did some good things tonight. Johnny's been getting the wins, but his stats are a little bit higher than he might like. So it's got to be good for him to get a shut up here tonight. Yeah, yeah, the, that was the message going into the third period of saying, guys, we uh, we, we got some goals here. Uh, we know we're going to get some opportunities. So this this third period's for Johnny here. Uh, that we're worried about that that number on the board. You know, you don't want to say shut out. You don't want to say zero. You know, that just jinx yourself. So um, guys did you know a couple period couple shifts there. We got a little loose, but. All in all, I thought, you know, uh, ben, ben MacArthur, he made some really nice plays. He was really good defensively tonight. And, um, you know, my, I thought um, the guys played a good third period and, and were able to uh, mitigate some, some chances. So good for Johnny. And uh, he's worked hard. He's, he's been a good goaltender for us, to, you know, thus far this season. Uh, you mentioned before the game you had to get through this one in order to focus on the next one. Obviously, the next one is against Lindenwood, a huge game at home. What are you saying to the guys, and how are you guys preparing for them? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, enjoy tonight. You know, it's, uh, you don't want to just pass over a nice one like this against a rival, but when we wake up tomorrow, I'll be ready to go. Um, we know that they're uh, the number one team in the nation for a reason. They got a couple more horses uh, on their side than we, than, we com than we competed against the last time. So when, when you play a team like that, you gotta be playing at your best. And it's a, it's a good benchmark for, for where we were, where we are, and when, where we need to get to. So it um, should be a really good test for us and um, we're, we're excited about the opportunity. So um, yeah, I'm 7.15 here again tomorrow to, to end the semester. So it's, it's flown by, it's been a lot of fun. And like I said, it'll be a good test for us to see where we're at and where we need to get to. Well, that was Coach Hogan's final thoughts on tonight's game. Todd, they're taking on Lindenwood tomorrow, the number one team in the nation. A tough matchup. What are you expecting from tomorrow night here at the Maryville University Hockey Center? Well, you talked about it just moments ago about how they're going to need to have the same kind of energy that they showcase tonight in tomorrow night's game. And I totally agree with that. They need to have that same energy, but even more focus because we saw it a little bit in the first period spurts here in the third where they they got a little bit loose got a little bit outside of themselves and given the opponent they were able to get away with that you're not going to be able to get away with that tomorrow you have to have a good clean game play a maryville game it, it, it's one of those interest interesting things to where you you have to come up with a game plan that's going to try to counteract what the lions are going to do but you can't focus solely on what they do because if you focused only on your opponent, it's going to be one of those situations to where you're only trying to counteract. You're never getting done what you want to get done. So it's going to be a nice counterbalance to see how they, they come out to tomorrow. Right, and we've talked with Coach Hogan plenty of times before, and he's always you know, nailed in our head that they're worried about themselves. They don't really pay attention too much to any of their opponents in terms of like, you know, watching film. They just want to focus on themselves before they start focusing on other teams. It's going to be hard not to focus on what Lindenwood does because, like we said, they're the, they're the best team in the nation. And, you know, for a while now, they've been a perennial program in the ACHA. So it's going to be tough not looking out and to see what they're going to do and trying to, you know, play their game instead of playing Maryville's game. I will say it's going to be tough not having Garrett Hunter in the lineup. I feel like you can probably get away with that in tonight's game. It's going to be tough not having him tomorrow night. Yeah, and, and Maryville's got the bodies in terms of manpower. They'll be able to absorb it. But in terms of what Hunter offers out there, in terms of both skating ability, physicality, moving the puck, we've seen it with a lot of these new guys that they've brought in this season. It's just changed the dynamic that Maryville can play because they can shift up from the back so quickly and losing a player the kind of caliber of Hunter is going to have an impact. But uh, as we've heard, it's gotten to be cliche a lot, but a lot of coaches say it. It's got to be a next man up mentality and somebody's going to have to fill that void. For sure. Speaking of defensemen, the defensemen, they were all in the action tonight. Let's go ahead and look at all nine of these goals that were scored this evening. Damian Karenji, he gets the hat trick. Spoiler alert, sorry, but he started things off early in this one. 
Of course, Damian Karinji loves floating by the blue line, goes against the grain, finds the back of the net for his first goal of the evening. And then Anthony Stavro, a terrific feed right here to Luke McLeod. Yeah, right across the seam. I mean, that's a thread the needle kind of pass and just a great finish from McLeod. And then once again, Damian Karinji, a slap shot, that one in the back of the net. And that was where we sat heading into the second period. And this is when the defense started to make noise. And Tymon Prexler just nifty at the blue line, a terrific shot. And that's what happens. You get bodies in front, it goes in the back of the net. Yeah, seeing eye shot, but you put it on the net for a reason. And look at this shot. Just, I don't even know how you stop that one, Todd. Just a beautiful shot by Ben McArthur. And then this is why you go to the net. Cole Mudra on the kill. That was a five-minute one, probably this, uh, one of the second one of the night, and Cole Mudra going to the net. And then, of course, Tymon Prexler once again, wristing one high. He finds the back of the net for his second of the game. And then in the third period, why not? Cole Bonnet, just a, a harmless shot from the blue line, really, and it just hit right off a skate and went between the wickets. Yeah, and for all the saves that Purdy made, he was standing on his head, but the couple that got past him were ones that he would like to have back, And uh, but still a good chance there from Bonnet and finished off by Karinji with the hat trick goal there. Yeah, and we mentioned it in the broadcast. Karinji probably looking to pass that puck, but I, the net was wide open. How yeah. do you not shoot that <laughs> on that? Yeah, given the situation, hey. is they're, they're turning the lights off on yeah. us here that um, – I think it really in any kind of situation, it doesn't matter if he's sitting on a hat trick or not. That's just kind of the player that Karinji is. He wants to get his goals, but he's more than willing to help set up some of his teammates as well. He's spread out his point totals. He now has uh, 13 goals on the season. Math is hard for me sometimes, <laughs> especially this late at night. But he's, he's also got the assists to go along with that. So he wanted to set up his teammate, but... He's sitting on the hat trick. The goaltender's down. You might as well scoop it in. He was able to finish it off nicely. Well, it looks like they're trying to kick us out. We're talking about Damian Karinji. He is the first star of tonight's game, followed by Tymon Prexler and Johnny Macera as he gets the shutout. So all three of these guys, in their own way, they played fantastic tonight for the Saints. They're going to need more of that tomorrow night. Let's look at some of the scores around the league before we get out of here on this State Farm postgame show. Missouri State, they lose to Illinois 6-3, to three, a big win for the Illini. Waldorf takes down Midland 4-3. to three. Delaware, they defeat Stony Brook 2-1, to one, and the University of Arizona takes down their state rival in Arizona State 4-1. to one. A uh, night full of upsets, Todd. Yeah, in terms of the seeds, the lower seeds coming up big there. Uh, an, an interesting one is seeing – uh, the University of Illinois managing to come back, get a win. We saw them earlier in the season. And um, I think it was early season jitters because they didn't necessarily show as well as we anticipated. Right. But now I think they're starting to get into the flow of this season and they come up with a win here tonight. Well, the Saints win 9 to nothing tonight over the McKendree Bearcats. They take on the Lindenwood Lions tomorrow, Saturday, 7-15, puck drop right here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. We thank everyone for tuning in to tonight's broadcast, and we look forward to talking to you, talking with you tomorrow night here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. I'm Andrew Marsh. That's Todd Vanula. Thanks to our guy Eric Skelton making us look great on camera and making us sound good as well. Everyone have a great night, and we'll see you on Saturday. The Maryville Saints Hockey Network thanks you for watching this presentation of the American Collegiate Hockey Association.